Hello. Welcome to the Wellness Generalist. If you're new here, my name is Annie. Welcome back if you are not new. So this video is a part of the Somatics Foundations series. Um, my attempt to organize and give uh, some structure to this channel so that I can expand into um, the generalism that is wellness itself, right? Um, so I am a somatics practitioner um, and somatics brings in a lot of things, you know, yoga uh, can be um, a somatic practice, of course, and dance um, and, you know, Western therapies version of somatics can also uh, show up or be practiced in many different ways, context, uh, depending on where we're experiencing that. And um, so I am here on this video to share a grounding or centering meditation practice based on the three pillars that all people need to be able to access fulfillment or be able to access like even space to start to explore fulfillment in our lives. What a miracle it is to be alive, right? <laughs> start us manifesting in this present moment into this meat suit that we get to inhabit for a time absolutely precious right so meditation shows up in a lot of different ways um you know there's many types of meditation um i used to practice uh days of silence as a form of meditation i used to practice sitting meditation um i've done before Vipassana, um, and other forms of mindfulness practices, uh, yoga being one of my favorite. I have some back and spinal issues um, that I manage, and yoga is one of my favorites. Um, and really grateful for all of the yoga teachers out there I've benefited from. Um, I'll do a shout out uh, to them and see if we can link up here. But um, so the three, I guess I'll just, before going into the three pillars, I will um, just name like how I relate to what I, I just shared, which is uh, my perspective coming from, you know, I'm a Westerner, obviously. I grew up in, in the United States of America. I've traveled quite a bit. Um, you know, I've traveled to India. I've had a uh, privilege to travel um, to Europe and Asia. Um, and I, I see why certain types of meditation are attractive and approachable by Westerners. Um, at least in America, this culture of, um, you know, our worth coming through like productivity and being hyper productive also because of techn technology and modernity, this ever increasing pressure to, to like do more all the time um as if there's some sort of we're just gonna blast off one day um <laughs> and so this pressure to be very productive um the worthiness thing is a whole other conversation i could get into another time <clears throat> this do 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 culture and like more 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 faster 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 more stimulus all the time it makes sense why like sitting and doing nothing and going inward is basically very mirroring to uh, these pressures in our culture, right? Um, so that's, that's my observation and uh, opinion around why certain types of mindfulness practices are very like counterbalancing to um, our culture, which makes sense. There's no value judgment on that. It just is. Um, and then moving to references and um, also options in my 
opinion and in my health practice, I really support people in finding out what are all the different options that they have around their choices, their choices in their own health journey. So I don't prescribe things. I don't, not in the technical legal form of like a doctor, because I'm not a licensed therapist. I can't, I, I don't, I don't believe in prescriptive medicine in, in a, as a, as a framework in general. Um, grateful for modern medicine and prescriptions. <laughs> Um, but just prescriptive formulas, like it just doesn't work. All of us are different, right? And what works for us. So like I have these somatic tools, but because I don't believe in um, it just, you know, they're just one set of tools in the larger toolbox. Um, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I have some nutrition advice. Um, however, I'm not a nutritionist. So I'm not going to have... A, a series on here about nutrition probably um if i do it'll come from more from like um farming and gardening and herbalism perspective because i do have a lot of experience around that um so that's why i'm orienting around this wellness generalist framework because um yeah because i just truly believe it's choicefulness and options is what is the foundation for healing. Also acknowledging that in this modern day, we are bombarded with so many options, like at the grocery store, how many chips do we need? Like how many types of chips can we have? That can be really overwhelming. Like why do we need so many chips? Um, it's like a privileged people problem, that example, but just naming that like where choicefulness comes in handy and like where choicefulness is like actually a distraction and overwhelming. Um, so, uh, so the somatics is like a toolbox and then, you know, we'll get into like, you know, this is just all very foundational. So I want to give people little tidbits and the taste of introduction to somatics through this, uh, first series. But we all, no matter where we come from, no matter what we're dealing with, no matter how we relate to our bodies or our wellness journey, we all need access to dignity, to safety, and belonging. Okay, dignity or respect, safety, and belonging. These are the three pillars for all people. Um, and I would posit to say, I would, you know, that may be for all beings as well. Yeah. Although I don't, I'm not going to get into the ethnocentric uh, personification, uh, you know, around other beings. Like, um, as an ecologist, I just have um, stuff to say about that. But I think it's useful to consider um, you know, that we're animals equal to other animals and then also not, um, you know, personifying or projecting ethnocentric values as well or assumptions onto other life forms. Um, so safety, dignity, and belonging. Uh, we all belong in systems. Uh, we belong in groups. We are social. We are herd animals. We are hunter-gatherers. We're completely wired head to toe for social connection, all right? Whether you're an introvert, an extrovert, um, more or less empathic or sensitive, it doesn't matter. We all are social uh, beings. Um, and then of course that shows up in different ways, but we all need people. Um, and then, you know, Dunbar's number, we haven't evolved with this number of people and how much we process and how many people we're like exposed to in our village, our towns, our cities. So there's some like very efficient adaptation that we're all doing, hopefully some of us, um, to catch up to, to that piece um, with, with the numbers. Uh, it's kind of like a side note. Um, we all deserve to have access to a sense of belonging in a group um, and in our family uh, lineage. 
um, in our communities, our families. Yeah. Um, we belong in our body. So this has to do with safety. How safe do I feel in my body? How do I know if I'm feeling safe? When I'm feeling safe, I dot, dot, dot. I know I feel safe when dot, dot, dot. I know I feel safe right now because just taking one breath, I can easily notice I feel all the areas of my body equally. I am here. Hey. Um, yeah. Um, I feel safe knowing um, I have my sound machine on outside this office. So I know that I have uh, just privacy in this moment to, to do this uh, video. You know, I'm just naming, you know, what comes up there for me in this present moment to give examples. Dignity or respect. We all deserve, have a right to access to dignity in our bodies. In this lifetime, this is a human right. Okay, yes. Dignified, to know, um, to be deserving of respect. Respect, re, respect. Re means to look again. To look, sorry. Excuse me. Re means again. Revisit, revise, respect. Re means again. Spect, like spectacle, means to look. So respect means to look again. So dignity means to have access to respect, meaning if whatever's going on, um, every person is ought to have access to to respect, to be able to be looked at again. Like, huh, there's some tension or conflict or miscommunication. Can I look at that again? Can I respect this person, um, you know, that they, they deserve, um, you know, to feel dignified. Uh, so dignity, safety, belonging. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just do a, a brief uh, introduction to this centering meditation around the, these three pillars that I just introduced, okay? Um, and you can follow along. Repeat several times, do it on your own if it feels good. Okay, um, and I just want to name where I get these from sometimes. Sometimes I'm forgetting. I would love, um, you know, trying to respect uh, my teachers. And um, so I am currently studying with Stacey Haynes. Um, Stacey Haynes has done a lot of work around uh, child sexual trauma healing um, for individuals and for our culture. And She's a teacher at the Strozzi Institute, Somatics Institute um, in California, and recently came out with a book called The Politics of Trauma, or Politics of Trauma. And so this somatics work, like therapy work, that's often done in one-on-one -on -one context in this very individualized framework of mental health therapy that a lot of us are used to, um, bridging that into group work, which, um, you know, she, amongst many others. Um, Adrienne Marie Brown is one of them, leaders in generative somatics, group somatics. How are we using soma, the body, the whole body, acknowledging that this, this body is a part of all the bodies. We are connected. Um, we are individuals within a collective, both and. And in our healing work, it's really important to be orienting around both um, and acknowledging if we're coming, like I am live in California, I'm coming from this context of being socialized very much more towards the individual side, rugged individuals. Um, so uh, I could do a whole other video on that, and this is getting on longer than I had planned. So, all right. Are you ready for some dignity, safety, and belonging orientation? Okay. So standing, sitting, you could do this laying down, just if you're feeling alert and comfortable in your body, that's what matters. So this practice, 
Um, we're going to be orienting around, um, orienting just means our attention towards, um, I'm bringing my inner attention and also physiological, I'm bringing attention to this <clears throat> vertical plane from the crown of my head to the tailbone. Breathing into my right, my access to dignity. Sitting in a dignified position, upright, taking care of my spine. I'm not leaning forward or back, feeling comfortable. How do I know I feel dignified in my body? <laughs> I feel I am respecting my body when I sit in this position, acknowledging comfort, not forcing anything around any areas of tension or relaxation, just noticing, sitting up. Now I'm orienting towards the plane of my width, the shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, knee to knee. Just taking a moment to perhaps sway side to side, feeling into this sense of safety. How much space do I feel safe taking up? This much space. Mm. Knowing there's no right or wrong here. Knowing my boundaries. Feeling maybe I'm only feeling safe in this much space. Or if I'm feeling safe in this much space, there's no value judgment around any of that. We are bringing compassion and a principle of no judgment to how we are wanting to be in this boundary and vulnerability space, acknowledging how safe I feel. And now moving to the front and back plane of the body. And this right to belonging. So starting with the back of the body, acknowledging where you're coming from, your history, your lineage, your life experience that has brought you to this present moment. Those who have your back, your well ancestors. Just taking a moment to acknowledge any people in your life, beings, perhaps mystical creatures that are guides or other guides of some sort that have your back, that have supported you in coming to this moment of aliveness. Breathing into this awareness that you belong, you belong to them and they belong to you. Just noticing how that's showing up right now. And moving to the front side of the body, perhaps imagining this path ahead or just looking forward into space. Perhaps it's unknown, this is the future, this is where we're going, and you're sitting here right in the moment between the past and the future, right? This is the present moment, this is the only moment that's happening. The path might be a bit unclear, as the future tends to be, 
Perhaps there's those on the sidelines rooting you on. Just taking a moment to notice this path. If you are a visual person, perhaps visualizing this, maybe you're, there's a garden on the side or the, a parade and those in your life on the sidelines cheering you on. Perhaps you're in the forest on a path, there are park benches. Just taking a moment to visualize that, feel into that. Mm. Acknowledging you are right to access to your life path, to your purpose, to fulfillment. Um, in some yoga traditions, this would be like your dharma right? Your life path and purpose. Um, and so even though it might not be clear all the time, this practice can help us gain clarity, um, at least gain stability so that we can access more clarity around this right to fulfillment and our life path. So thank you for watching. Thank you for practicing with me. Um, please share this with your friends. That this is a great meditation um, and framework around these three um, pillars of fulfillment um, and our rights as humans um, that apply anywhere, anytime, right? And so this can be uh, used as a personal meditation. Um, this could be used in a group for organizing work to help um, all, you know, share and thank you so much for tuning in. If you are enjoying this um, and found this to be helpful, feel free to comment. I appreciate feedback, um, even, um, you know, supportive uh, critique as well. And please like, share, and subscribe and share with your friends or family, community, anyone you think we could find this helpful. And thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.